Good it again. Um, I'm Frank Hu. I'm um, a professor of nutrition and epidemiology at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Um, it's my pleasure to co-organize uh, this uh, symposium with uh, Steve. Um, now we're going to continue with uh, the session on um, global trends and epidemiology of uh, added sugar. Um, what I'm going to talk about in the next uh, 40 to 45 minutes is uh, to uh, give you an overview about epidemiology evidence on the relationship between added sugar intake and, and uh, various health outcomes. I'm also going to talk about the implications of uh, the epidemiologic evidence for uh, dietary guidelines and uh, recommendations on added sugar intake. Uh, those are the key questions I'm going to address today. First, is there a dose response relationship between added sugar intake and health outcomes? This is an important question because some studies have suggested uh, a threshold effect, other studies have suggested a dose response relationship, and this kind of uh, data will have important implications for recommendations on added sugar intake. And the second question is, uh, Nicotinic sugar is particularly bad for obesity, so today we uh, have been focusing on sugar sweetened beverages, and the evidence for sugar sweetened beverages is much stronger than uh, added sugar from other sources. And uh, so I'm going to review the evidence um, for both SSBs and also for total added sugar intake in relation to outcomes. And the next question is, are uh, sports drinks the same as other type of SSBs in promoting obesity. Um, another, I think, very important question, interesting question, is are uh, all forms, uh, food sources of fructose created equal? Um, are 100% food juices healthy? Are diet sodas better alternative to regular sodas? Uh, tomorrow we're gonna have a whole session on um, artificial sweetened beverages. Uh, today I'm going to uh, provide some uh, data on the relationship between diet sodas and, uh, and the health outcomes. And then finally, how to incorporate healthy uh, hydration habits into a healthy uh, diet pattern. Uh, I wish I have um, the data to uh, answer all those questions, uh, but at least I will provide some data that can stimulate discussions um, today. Um, as you know, in our diet, uh, we um, consume both natural sugars and added sugars. We get natural sugars from fruits and vegetables, uh, milk. Um, we, uh, most of our uh, added sugars come from uh, processed foods and, and beverages. Uh, natural sugars are not a problem because it's very difficult for you to overconsume natural sugars from fruits and vegetables, right? But the amount of added sugars uh, is, uh, is a huge public health problem as uh, has already been described earlier. Uh, on average, Americans consume 22 teaspoons of uh, added sugar per day, 22 teaspoons of added sugar. And half of the added sugars come from uh, beverages, um, like sodas, soft drinks, uh, fruit drinks, um, sweetened tea, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, several years ago, um, in collaborating, colleague, collaborating with colleagues from uh, the CDC, uh, we conducted analysis to look at the relationship between added sugar intake and the CVD mortality among U.S. adults uh, using the enhanced uh, data. Uh, this figure shows the distribution of added sugar intake as percent of calories um, in the U.S. Uh, uh, adult population. Uh, on average, uh, Americans consume 15% of their calories from, from added sugar, and more than one quarter of the population consume at least 20% of calories from added sugar. So overall, uh, the added sugar consumption is quite high uh, in, in the U.S. population. And then we look at the relationship between um, the added sugar intake and the risk of uh, uh, CVD mortality in the uh, enhanced follow-up uh, study. Uh, as you can see that um, uh, there is a, a, a dose response relationship between increasing um, added sugar consumption as percent of calories uh, and um, increased uh, risk of uh, uh, CVD mortality. Um, the uh, increased risk was particularly 
high among those who consume uh, more than 20% uh, of their calories from uh, added sugar, but overall, uh, the, risk, the re relationship between the amount of added sugar and the risk of uh, CVD mortality appears to be linear. Uh, in a categorical analysis, um, compared to those who consume less than 10% of added sugar, uh, um, uh, calories from added sugar, those who consume uh, 10 to 25 percent of calories from added sugar had a 30 percent increased risk of CVD, and those who consumed 25 percent of uh, calories from added sugar, uh, their risk of um, um, CVD mortality was increased by two to three fold. And those analyses were adjusted for wide range of uh, CVD risk factors, including uh, BMI, um, uh, uh, antihypertensive medications, blood pressure. Uh, 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 serum cholesterol and so on and so forth. And in this analysis, we also found that regular cons consum consumption of uh, SSBs uh, and this one serving per day was associated with uh, about 30% increased risk of uh, CVD mortality. And subsequently, we conducted an analysis to look at added sugar intake and the lipid profiles among U.S. Uh, children um, uh, also using the uh, enhanced data. Uh, on average, uh, American uh, adolescents consume about 17% of their calories from added sugar, which is very high. 80% of American children, um, adolescents, uh, consume uh, more than 10% of their calories from added sugar. Um, so in this uh, analysis, we found uh, a dose-response relationship between increasing consumption of added sugar and decrease HDL uh, cholesterol uh, levels and uh, increased triglycerides levels and also uh, increased uh, total to HDL um, cholesterol ratio. So this data indicates that um, uh, increasing uh, consumption of added sugar is harmful, uh, not just for CVD uh, risk for adults, but also uh, CVD risk factors uh, for uh, uh, U.S. children. Uh, this is a meta-analysis published in AJCN uh, a few years ago. Uh, this meta-analysis summarized data from 39 trials on uh, the uh, effects of added sugar intake and the cardiometabolic uh, risk factors. Uh, this um, analysis um, showed that uh, added sugar intake increased um, triglycerides, uh, total and LDL cholesterol, and also increased uh, blood pressure. So this data from trials are uh, quite consistent with uh, the data from the observational studies. As I mentioned earlier, um, sugar children beverages um, account for uh, at least half of all added sugars in, in the U.S. diet, and one can of soda contains uh, about 10 teaspoons of sugar, uh, which is about 140 uh, calories. Uh, in the U.S., um, the majority of uh, SSBs are sweetened by high fructose corn syrups. Um, the major types of uh, SSBs uh, include uh, sodas or soft drinks, uh, fruit drinks, and also energy drinks and sports drinks. Um, uh, there is uh, uh, some evidence that the consumption of uh, energy drinks and sports drinks is increasing uh, in the U.S. population, especially among uh, adolescents and uh, young adults. Uh, in the past several decades, the consumption of SSBs has increased dramatically in both uh, U.S. children and adults. Uh, as Barry mentioned uh, earlier, uh, since 2000, uh, there is a moderate decline in SSB consumption um, in uh, both children and uh, adults. The uh, decline is uh, uh, about 20 to 25 percent in the past um, 10 to 15 years, so it's moderate, but uh, the data, uh, the trend is, uh, is uh, still encouraging. Although the uh, consumption of SSBs uh, has decreased in the U.S., uh, the uh, consumption or sales of uh, sugar sweetened soft drinks in other parts of the world are skyrocketing, uh, especially in developing countries in Asia, in the Middle East, in Latin America, and also in uh, Eastern Europe. Another major problem is the um, uh, increase in portion size of uh, SSBs. Um, and uh, as you can see that in the past uh, uh, several decades, the portion size uh, in 
uh, of the SSBs has increased uh, dramatically, and that has contributed to the toxic uh, beverage environment. Numerous epidemiological studies have uh, looked at the relationship between uh, SSB consumption and uh, a wide range of uh, health outcomes, including obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, CVD, gout, um, and uh, long alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease. Um, there are several uh, mechanisms through which uh, SSBs uh, uh, impact the uh, cardiometabolic um, health outcomes. Um, we, as uh, discussed earlier, SSBs contain high amount of liquid calories, which are not uh, very uh, satisfying, and which can lead to um, increased caloric intake and uh, weight gain. Another pathway is through high glycemic node. Uh, we know that high glycemic node can lead to increased uh, insulin resistance, chronic inflammation, and uh, increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Uh, Overconsumption of fructose uh, is, uh, has been linked to um, a gout uh, because um, a fructose uh, consumption can lead to um, uh, increased production of uh, uric acid, uh, which leads to hyperuricemia and, uh, and uh, uh, gout. Um, another uh, pathway through which um, uh, fructose can uh, impact cardiometabolic risk is through the uh, increased de novo um, uh, lipogenesis and the increased uh, uh, accumulation of uh, visceral fat, uh, intramuscular fat, and also intrahepatic uh, fat. Uh, this is an analysis uh, we uh, published several years ago uh, looking at uh, changes in um, uh, food intake and, uh, uh, and the weight change over uh, four year, uh, each four-year uh, period in our uh, three large cohorts, uh, the Nurses Health Study, Nurses Health Study 2, and the uh, Health Professional Follow-up Study. Uh, this is a quite a comprehensive analysis because we look at a wide range of uh, foods, uh, food groups, and, and beverages and this analysis included more than 120,000 uh, men and women followed for 20 years uh, in uh, those three cohort studies. And the results are remarkably consistent across the, the three cohorts. Uh, so some of the foods um, contributed to increased weight gain. Uh, other foods contributed to uh, a lower amount of weight gain. Uh, the foods that promote weight gain include uh, potato chips, uh, potatoes, fries, uh, processed meats and processed meats, butter, sweets, and desserts, and refined grains. Uh, the foods that contribute to lower amount of weight gain include fruits and vegetables, nuts, whole grains, um, uh, and also yogurt. Uh, among the beverages, uh, increasing consumption of SSBs is associated with the largest amount of weight gain. Um, even 100% fruit juice uh, is associated with higher amount of weight gain. Interestingly, uh, milk consumption was not associated with uh, increased or decreased weight gain, and diet soda consumption was associated with a slower, uh, slightly lower amount of uh, weight gain. So this data indicates that uh, different uh, type of foods, beverages, or the different quality of uh, foods and beverages uh, can uh, promote or uh, mitigate uh, age-related weight gain. So to prevent weight gain and obesity, it's very important to um, uh, emphasize overall quality of the diet. Um, clearly, um, SSBs uh, is one of the main uh, re factors for promoting weight gain, but uh, we should also pay attention to other aspects of the diet uh, besides um, SSB consumption. Uh, we did a substitution analysis to see uh, what kind of uh, beverage substitutions uh, is beneficial for preventing weight gain. Uh, in uh, this study, we found that uh, uh, substituting uh, water or uh, coffee for SSBs or 